There were so many days where I would just fight through the moment and I just had to block out time. I couldn't think about how many months it had been since I'd been feeling this way. Hey guys, so it's me, Kaylin. I've missed you. I'm at a loss with how to start this video. I haven't posted a video in three months and what I'm going to be talking about today is going to be hard for me to talk about because I'm just going to be delving into what I've really been going through for this past year and this past year has been the most agonizing challenging thing I've ever gone through and I just really want to let you into it all I'm finally coming through the other side and if you have been around for a while and watched the videos that I posted previous to this one you kind of know what was going on I was struggling with a very bad skin disease and I'm just gonna be really real in this video. I really just want you to know how hard it's been because I know chances are you're going through something too. And I'm not gonna sugarcoat things. I'm just gonna really tell you the details of what I've struggled with for this past year. I just really wanna share with you the things that I have learned in this season. And I feel like in order for you to really understand the weight of these things, you have to understand the weight of what I have been going through. Ultimately, I pray that as I let you into my struggle, you can feel comforted knowing that you're not alone in what you're going through. And if God can supply me the strength that I have needed this past year to make it through each and every day, that he will do the same for you and that he is there with you in whatever you're going through. And even if it's low, even if it's hard, and even if your circumstances aren't changing, he is with you and he will be there to walk you through it. <sighs> um... Really quick too, I just want to say I've missed you guys and I love each of you so much and I just want to thank you if you're new to my channel for clicking subscribe. I really hope that you enjoy what you find here on my channel. And to all of you old and new subscribers, if you want to know when I start sharing more videos about what I've been going through and what God has been teaching me, make sure that you click the notification bell or just come back to my channel and check. I can't commit to a schedule right now just because I'm still kind of in the thick of all of this, but I'm sure you've noticed, at least I've noticed my subscription box, I don't get notified when the people I'm subscribed to post a video. So yes, if you want to be notified, just click the little bell next to the subscribe button and you'll be notified when I post a new video. To start things off, this is the first time I've looked like this since I posted my last video. I have not done my hair and makeup and actually put myself together like this, and I'll get into all of that. It's not because I haven't wanted to, it's because of actually how my skin has been and just the nitty-gritty of what I've been going through. Also, I know my skin looks pretty good here. My face is the best part of my skin overall, but even in pictures on Instagram and whatnot, you can't tell the dysfunction that is going on with my skin, the cells, the texture, the surface, the flaking, everything. It's just not obvious in photos, and I plan on sharing with you some photos of what my skin has gone through in the past year, but it's still, it's not the same as it is in person, so keep that in mind. So I'm just going to kind of give you a recap of this year and what I've been going through with my health and what happened. I mean, I still don't understand everything, but about a year ago, I was eight months pregnant, and it was probably right around this time where I was having some skin issues in my pregnancy, but my skin just exploded with this red, terrible, irritated rash. It was so terrible. It was agonizing. I would be in tears every day, and that was when I was already pregnant. It was already a struggle but I remember going to my OB and she thought it may be pups and that's what a dermatologist said but I knew in my gut it was not pups it did not look like that that's a typical pregnancy rash that goes away after you deliver but I was just bawling in her doctor's office I think it was about 36 weeks but I was strongly considering getting induced I was that desperate I was just in terrible pain and that's when I started just trying a thousand bajillion things for my skin and honestly you can tell me things, I've probably already tried them and I'm at this point where I'm not trying additional things for my skin. But essentially, I was just in pure agony. So that was a year ago. And about that time, literally from that point forward, every day has been the most agonizing day of my life. And I can't, I never could have imagined how a skin rash could affect you so much. And I'm just gonna share with you in general kind of what this whole year what it's entailed because it hasn't just been skin symptoms and my skin has changed a lot throughout the year. It's finally starting to heal and I'll get more into that at the end. But it started off really red, pretty itchy, just bumpy and it was just terrible and it would it just spread all over my body and I would spend hours in the shower crying. We, we tried multiple things. I couldn't sleep at night. I was pregnant. I gave birth. 
I remember too, after I gave birth, the nurses saw my body and they were just horrified at what they saw. I forgot about what was going on and I was like, what? And they're like, your skin, your skin. Anyways, it was shocking to most people who saw it. So at that point, I did continue to make videos, but that was literally my highest functioning self. And that's what you're seeing right now. This is like my highest functioning self right now for you in front of the camera. And when that rash exploded on my body, my husband has a flexible schedule, so he was able to stay home more, but I was just desperate. I was begging for help. I felt trapped inside my body. I felt tormented every single day and night, and I felt that way literally this whole year. It's been day to day. It's been the biggest challenge. I've never gone through something like this where I'm literally just have to hold on for another hour and I did that for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks where every moment I just wanted to be out of my body or do anything. And my skin changed, it got more flaky, it got all these hardened layers. If you look up elephant skin, it's kind of like that where it just, it folds really funny and it just so uncomfortable. It would be cracking open everywhere. I'd wake up with just cracks everywhere with blood and it, it hurt, everything hurt and it was just so uncomfortable and I would have these flare-ups where it just felt like poison was under my skin and it would just kind of ooze out of me. It was so bad. There would be just dead skin on everything. So much dead skin. Not just the top layer, but I'm talking every layer of my skin was, were just pulling apart. They're just coming apart and the best way I can describe it is it literally felt like, it's felt like I've been eaten alive. Like I'm being eaten alive 24-7 over my whole body. That may sound dramatic, but that's just the sensation of what it feels like. And I would just try and do anything to distract myself. There would be days where I literally couldn't do anything because to move my body, you know, moves your skin and that added stimulation on it was just, just terrible. It was just agonizing. So I would just be in one position. I'd be in front of a space heater because I'd it just makes me really, really cold. I'm always really cold, probably because my skin is all broken open. I would just be so cold, and then I'd also have night sweats. My lymph nodes started getting really swollen, and my whole body, it's still like this now, but is just filled with all this extra fluid because my lymphatic system is so backed up. I never knew where all your lymph nodes were, but I could feel them swollen and hard under my skin, around my whole body, around my groin and my armpits just everywhere. It's worse kind of on my hands, my arms, my legs, behind my knees, my ankles, and my wrists, just where the joint capsules are. It's really bad there. And I had excruciating joint pain. It felt like I had the flu for months on end. My whole body was aching. My skin was doing all this stuff. There were months where the rash started weeping, and it still is. I still have a lot of these symptoms. They're just less severe right now. But it would just kind of, especially my legs and my feet, when I'd be standing up, it'd just be oozing. And my feet and my legs were purple. You could just see all the blood in them. It wasn't circulating. And my skin, it was both really hardened and they're just layers and layers of hardened skin. But then it was also very, very thin. I literally just barely s scratch my skin and it would just start leaking this fluid, which is, it's disgusting. It feels disgusting. It just feels terrible and to have it was just like that 24 7 non-stop and it would just go through all these different stages of flaking and just all these different stages and if I didn't scratch at all it would just get so hard it would eventually just start cracking open and it was just incredibly painful and finally I used to have so many cuts on my hands but now you can kind of see it's much better it's still thick here and there's still fluid in here. Oh yeah, I'll show you pictures, but my fingers were about twice the size as they are now. They were so swollen. My whole body was, again, it still is, around my knees, especially my ankles, and there are all these extra folds of skin because it's so, I don't really know why, but it's just so filled with fluid. And exercise has been one of the one things I have forced myself to do because it's so important for healing and moving your lymphatic system and getting those endorphins has really helped but even my socks I had to cut the front of them because they were just squeezing my swollen ankles and cutting off the circulation and 
yeah, my ankles were just so big. All of me was just so puffed up and just way bigger than it should be. And it's finally starting to like go back down. I can feel my bones more. I couldn't feel my bones or the form of my foot or things like that. It was just so puffy and filled with fluid. If you've been around, it's kind of a long story too, but in December, we thought something in the house was affecting my health. So we moved like that up to my in-laws. And this was... It was not planned whatsoever. I was honestly really traumatized from what I'd been going through. And I, yeah, I really thought something in the house was affecting my health. And we came up here. That's where we still are now. My husband, pretty much, he probably works like five hours a week. We're pretty much living by faith now. We're at his family's house and it's so obvious we're supposed to be here in my heart. Like, I know God has us here for a reason. And there is still so much hope in this story, just so you know, and I will get to more of that, but I just want you to know how bad it's really, really been. So, we are at my in-laws, and it's a full house. I mean, my mother-in-law's here, my father-in-law's here, he's home, he's retired. He is facing a serious illness as well, and he's been going through that for five years. So, my mother-in-law still works, and then my sister-in-law and her best friend, who's pretty much like family, they live here, and they share a room. And then it's me, my husband, and our two girls, who are almost three and now nine months. Based on the condition that I've been in, my husband hasn't been working. I haven't been able to care for the children. It just... I can't be present. I don't... The one way I can describe it is like... Imagine if a thousand bees were stinging you in one moment and you were trying to parent. It feels exactly like that. Or like you're about to have diarrhea or something just so... It comes over you, that survival instinct of preserving your health and being in that state 24-7. And I, again, I'm finally coming out of it, but that's what it's been like. My husband has been doing everything with the girls. There were months where all I would do is he would bring her to me to nurse and that was excruciating, that was terrible, and that's all I could do. And I would cry because I missed my kids. I couldn't, I just couldn't spend time with them. I just wasn't in that state and if you watch my videos, you know I love being a mom and it broke my heart. It's still, it's still hard for me to grasp. It's still hard for me to grasp. I really feel like I missed out on so much of these precious moments and I just try and maintain the best attitude and be grateful for what I do have but that has been really really hard and it's been really hard on my husband. I mean he is incredibly burnt out and it's just been really really hard. So yes we are at my in-laws indefinitely until I get better and there is so much purpose with us being here. It feels so right and meant to be. It has been challenging. I mean, we don't have our own space. I'm so grateful we have two rooms in their house, which is a huge blessing. We are further away from my family, which has been hard, but we do have so much more support. And I just I was so relieved when my husband got on board and realized I was not okay. Like, my body, I've just felt very, very sick. It's not just the skin stuff, but I have felt very, very sick. So I just had... I think related to the swelling, I had just super achy joints, just every bit of my body ached to move and I would just have other detox type symptoms. Another thing too is I would, one place that I would find some relief would be in the shower. So I would spend hours in the shower just in the water because if my skin was wet like that, I didn't feel it just breaking apart and doing all the things that it was doing. So I would spend so long in the shower. I still, today, it's been a year and I still... I'm taking really long baths and honestly it's just exhausting like I hate the neediness I will spend like an hour or two in the bath just trying to it sounds rough but just like exfoliating my skin just rubbing myself with a washcloth because all this dead skin when it's just clinging on it's just so uncomfortable so just gently rubbing myself and getting the skin off because otherwise it's even more uncomfortable when I get out of the shower and then I put shea butter on my body and that's the one thing that has worked for my body but it takes just so long to soak into my body and it's just this long process of like tending for myself and tending my wounds and it just I hate it honestly I have God's helps to give me grace to accept where I'm at but it's awful like I hate 
there's just so many things that I've had to do for survival, just like so many needy things, like always being so cold and having to shower for so long and I can't sleep at night, that's the other thing that's been really big and still an issue right now is the insomnia. Just the pure discomfort, I mean if, if you just imagine someone clawing at you and trying to go to sleep while that's happening, that's what it's been like for the past year, it's been incredibly hard to sleep. I will just have to get so tired in order to fall asleep and when it was bad, you know I have an infant too, so when it was bad my daughter would wake up. If something would wake me up, if it was my daughter or just my skin itself would wake me up, it could take me hours to go back to sleep. So some nights I would maybe sleep an hour before my daughter was awake at 6.30 but that's when my husband comes in because then he would start taking over and start taking over the parenting and I would just try and sleep because I would have slept an hour and obviously when you're healing sleep is so important. So that has just thrown off our whole schedule and that has just been exhausting. So there's that and yeah, getting dressed. Only certain clothes would be comfortable. I've honestly lived in grungy sweatpants and long sleeve shirts. The more I'm covered up the better because I'm not itching but it has to be cotton. And I've just looked like a nasty slob. I haven't cut my hair in a year. It, normally it just looks really greasy because I have shea butter on me and I just have it up in a bun 24-7. I'm just... It's just like when you're sick, there's constant dirty laundry being made because of the skin and the oil on my body and that just gets on everything and it just grosses me out so much. Again, it's something that I've just had to accept but it's hard and honestly this whole experience has been incredibly traumatizing. Just everything I've gone through. There were so many days where I would just fight through the moment and I just had to block out time. I couldn't think about how many months it had been since I'd been feeling this way because it's literally 24-7 and you can't get out of your body. So I would just do everything to focus on making it through the moment and I just have to block out all of the bad thoughts, just all of the thoughts of hopelessness and uh, I don't know, it just seeing such little progress every day. Actually, I saw the decline of my skin for months and months and months, so just seeing things get worse. I wouldn't say I was exceptionally depressed or anything. I mean, yes, I just had a baby and a toddler, and I'm going through this agonizing thing, but there was part of me that just wanted it to be over. I didn't want to die, but I didn't want to live through what I was going through because I just felt so maxed out, mostly in my body, more so than in my mind and in my heart, but I just felt I just couldn't do it anymore. It, it, I just felt like I couldn't do it anymore. But even in those moments, God was with me. He has never left me in this. And it's hard. It's hard when you're going through something hard. But God has been with me every bit of the way. And it's been a stress on everyone, on this whole household, on my husband. It's obviously been a huge challenge. There were weeks where I barely even left my bedroom, let alone the house, but like I said, exercise has been incredibly important and I try and exercise every day. The main thing I do is I go on walks with my daughter or go on runs with the jogging stroller. That's just super simple, but I would literally just have to stop itching and get out and race out of the house and start running just to get that runner's high and those endorphins because it kind of would distract from what I was feeling in my body. So there are times where my body was tired, but I wouldn't want to stop running. This is, hasn't happened since. But just when it was so bad, I just wanted to stay in that point of that runner's high and never come down from that and never feel what was going on in my body. So you're probably wondering, what is this skin thing? What is it? What do you have? It's part mystery. I have a lot of theories about what's going on. I do think part of it is topical steroid withdrawal. If you look that up, TSW, topical steroid withdrawal. The experience of what other people have experienced and the pictures look very similar to what my skin has looked like. And I was using cortisone cream just on my hand for a few years though to help with just some eczema by where my ring finger was. You can look into it all, but topical steroids, they're not a solution at all. It's just a band-aid and it can cause the actual root of the issue of your skin to fester and get worse and it prevents your body from healing. So I do not recommend using topical steroids at all because it can actually cause what I am going through. 
So I do believe that is part of it. It's hard to imagine though because I didn't use that much of the cream, but everyone's body is different and my body was under a lot of stress. I mean, I had two back-to-back -back pregnancies. I was nursing my older daughter when I got pregnant, even when I delivered my second daughter. So it's been my daughter is turning three, so it's been close to four years of non-stop nursing and pregnancy, and that has put a lot of stress on my body. There's some other things going on as well. I'm now seeing a naturopath, and right now we're focusing on my digestion, my adrenals, and I think parasites may be an issue as well. So we, things are good right now, but even before this point of seeing her, I have seen healing happen in my body. I personally believe that diet is everything and just what we put into our body our environment, everything like that is incredibly important and things can either help toxify our bodies or help heal our bodies. And I'm gonna link a YouTube channel down below. I mentioned it in my previous video, Rob Stewart, but he had some great advice and he helps people heal from skin disease. And it was in January that I started following his protocol, which is plant-based. I did a few weeks of totally raw. I have kind of changed my diet since then. I really just try and listen to my body. But I was so sick that I just craved fruits and vegetables, things that were easy to digest, rich in minerals and vitamins. But he's helped heal a ton of people of different skin diseases, and he says it takes at least six months. And it's funny because it was about six months in since January, so about June, where I started noticing much more of a difference in my skin where I really knew I was getting better. But just like that guy Rob says, there were weeks and weeks and months where it got worse. I mean, things got swollen and cracked and it was just weeping and all over my body and it was just really, really bad before I saw any change and I just had hope that it would and I knew I was doing what my body needed. But yes, I've seen a dermatologist. I've got blood work done. It's pretty much atopic dermatitis, kind of. Doctors in traditional medicine just addresses the outward symptoms like all they really do is prescribe steroids which does not address the root of the problem and just can actually cause things to get worse which it did for me luckily I wasn't on steroids for long but still and I just have to thank there was this one day a few months ago where I got some notifications from my friends and they had all posted videos on their channels for me inviting people to help support our family and donate to a GoFundMe which they set up for me and they just all made the sweetest videos just sharing about what I've been going through and just asking people to help and that honestly helped so much. I'm not in the thick of it like I was then but I just started bawling when I saw that I just felt so touched and loved by these women and I'm gonna link their videos down below so you can watch them and check out their channels as well and I'll link the GoFundMe too if you want to support, if you want to donate our family, if you've been blessed by our videos, no pressure, but I know it's fun to give, so you're welcome to give to our family if you would like to. We are just paying our bills and, and just getting by, but all those donations were such a blessing. I've tried pretty much everything, but one thing that has helped me, a service that we've paid for besides like diet and exercise and the basic stuff like that and prayer, is manual lymphatic drainage, which is this really weird thing. If you've never heard of it, it helps support your lymphatic system, which I definitely need help with. And she kind of, it's a really weird technique, but she kind of pushes the fluid under your skin to encourage drainage, and it just gives me relief. And she will work on my legs and my arms, and it just is very gentle, very different practice. It's not like it takes anything away, but my body just really responds well to it. So that is one thing I've done and that. So right now I've been doing that about every other week. I was doing it every week. Another thing that has been really helpful in my healing is coffee, organic coffee enemas, which is, if you don't know what an enema is, you pretty much just flush out what is in your intestines and stuff and it comes out the other end. And it just does some really healing things for your liver, which I really believe I need for my livers so that has really been helpful as I work to heal my digestion our first pathway of detoxing stuff and elimination is obviously through our bowel movements and when that's blocked up like mine was it can start to come out through our skin which is our body's second detox organ so I really think just constipation that I struggled with and especially during pregnancy I think that made it worse just stopping everything in my body from continuing to flow so I've been working on that and just really paying attention to what food helps my digestion and what food hinders it and my naturopath also has me on some other things to just help encourage things to flow like drinking aloe juice and slippery elm which my husband's actually going out to get the aloe juice right now. There's lots of pieces to the puzzle. I personally believe the biggest is the lifestyle 
and eating just healthy, real food, trying to get organic as much as possible and just not put stuff in my body that's gonna cause inflammation because my body is just fighting it's fighting really hard with whatever's going on. I mean, those basic lifestyle changes have really helped. I'm gonna link that guy's channel down below as well so you can check his videos out, but that has been super helpful for me. And just giving me a framework for understanding because so many doctors just don't have the answers. They don't know how to address the root cause and this guy's all about that. Prayer has played a big part too and just believing in my healing, proclaiming my healing, declaring my healing over my body. You have seen me in some videos at a high point of just having so much faith and then there have been many low points as well and it's honestly a daily, it's an up and down thing but there have been kind of longer, it's been a long time I've been going through this and there have been longer stretches of times, time where I have just kind of accepted it and then other times where I just declare my healing because in Isaiah 55 it says that by his stripes we were healed, Christ already healed us and I absolutely believe in his healing. So it's been a process, but God has been helping me just proclaim my healing by faith and declare that I'm healed. I am well by the blood of Jesus and I belong in Christ's body. There's no sickness in Christ's body. Christ died so that we could be whole. I mean, that's why Jesus went around healing people. It was part of his ministry. It is part of what he did for us and what is available to us. And I believe in healing miracles but I think more often he calls us to walk it out day by day and proclaim his healing and just really build up those faith muscles. And that is something that I have been going through. I think after a year I'd be really good at it, but it's been hard. You think my faith would be really strong, but it's just honestly been up and down. I've had faith this whole time, but it just looked differently throughout the journey. That has been the overall gist of my journey. Where am I now? My skin has healed a lot. The swelling is starting to go down. It's not cracking so much. The actual texture of my skin is getting more normal, but it's still flaking all over. It still itches. It's still dry. The cells are still diseased looking just all over my body, but they're repairing. And I'll try and insert some more photos and I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful. And a few months ago, I asked God, I asked God, like, okay, God, do you, can you give me a time frame about this? I had asked him before, but he never said anything previously, but I really felt like he said seven months. And I knew that meant from January, just in my mind, which is when I started making those changes. And seven months would be August 12th. And right now we're towards the end of July and I have seen so much progress, even in the past two weeks that I'm so hopeful. And I just know, I just felt like at that time in August, things would be more normal. I'd be able to function more. So I'm just really excited for that. And I'm just so grateful that things are where they're at now. Again, it still takes so much patience. Like I said, I wasn't doing anything with my children for months. Now I'm with them later in the day after I take a shower and put shea butter on and just do all these weird rituals that have been like my survival. And I have more energy to kind of be with them, to go on walks with them and to you know, whatever you do with a baby and a toddler, just getting by with them. And I do my daughter's bedtime every night, which entails a lot of work, actually. It's like over an hour long because she takes a long time to go to sleep. But I'm just more present and I just, yeah, it's just, I didn't do anything for months, you guys. Like, I literally, there were months before I moved where I did not leave the house. I couldn't. To wear clothes... Everything was just impossible. My mom recently visited and we just did so much stuff. It was hard. I was tired because my body still feels really run down and it's still a challenge, especially with the sleep and everything. I still have a baby too. It's like nursing her is still a lot of work on my body, that in itself. But we went berry picking. We went, we're in the Bay Area, so we went to Pier 39. We went to the San Francisco Zoo. We just, again, I was tired, but... I've been so desperate to make memories with my family because I haven't done that for the past year and that was just such a treat for me. So about YouTube, just being here, I'm so happy because I feel like it kind of marks me coming back to life. It just encourages my faith and helps me realize how far I've come that even though it's hard right now and I, I am going to be cutting out clips of me itching and stuff that I've come so far and God has a purpose for me in this in some sense. I have never felt more hopeful about my future than I have in this journey. God has just given me such clear hope for the future in this time and what he is doing and 
even a sense of gratitude for what I've been going through because it has produced so much in me that's invaluable and that's what trials do and that's why God says to consider it pure joy when we face trials of many kinds. I haven't considered it joy but at the same time even in the worst of the worst just by what God was teaching me even though like I said I didn't want to live in a lot of ways because I just couldn't continue through the agony I wouldn't have taken it back. I was seeing God's hand in all so much that it was like I wouldn't even take it away because because I have so much faith in how redemptive our God is and how he takes the worst of the worst and makes the most amazing things out of it. And I was feeling it happen inside my soul and I was seeing it happen and there's just this sense of all that's impending, all the blessing and all the fruitfulness that is coming on the other side of this because you know, we have no money, we're living with my in-laws, I feel like I'm on my deathbed, like that's just what it feels like, the sense of just agony and hell that I was going through physically, it's not a place where you look at your life and be like, wow, things are going great, but at the same time, you know, in all of my life, I have never felt like, wow, in this weird sense, things are going great, like there's something so good happening, there's something so good happening in our family even though it's been incredibly stressful on my husband and it's put a big burden on my in-laws it's been a huge joy but it's been a lot for them too there is so much good going on still it's been harder for my husband to see but it has been very clear in my heart and i'm grateful i'm so grateful to be here so in my future videos now that you know how hellish my experience was and what it's really been and what i'm still going through I just hope that you can take to heart what God has been teaching me because there have been so many different things about kind of just your our purpose, material stuff, physical appearance, and going through that. Um, just, yeah, everything. God has taught me so many things and I really want to share them with you to solidify them in my spirit and hopefully encourage you and remind you of these things that matter and just these truths that he has instilled in my soul in this time. I also very soon want to share testimonies, the amazing ways God has provided for our family. Just the little things, you know when he does something and it just speaks right to you. There have been so many of them and I've tried to write as many as I could down. So I'm going to be sharing testimonies because testimonies are so encouraging. Yeah, it's been awesome to see what just the little ways God is working because when you're stripped of everything and when you are just completely reliant on him, which we have been literally in every way. You see him come through. You see him do things that normally we don't give him the room in our life to do. And that has just been really fun to see. Again, it's been hard. It's not like I'm just like, yay God all the time. Not at all. But it just, it's more like I've been in the pits and those moments have just really just blessed my soul and encouraged me and helped me continue on forward. It's so good to see you guys again and talk to you. I just wanted to be open again and just share with you all the real details and just let you know really what I have been going through. I probably have left things out that I wanted to touch on. If there's anything else you want to know about regarding this, let me know. I will try and get back to you. Let me know down in the comments and if you want to donate to our family and be a big blessing to us you're welcome to do that i'll link the gofundme in the description box and check out those ladies channels and just give them some love they're just so awesome and they have really been there to encourage me and love me and this online support you guys it means a lot to me it really does and i'm so grateful for you i love you so much and thank you for watching to the end let me know in the comments if you watch to the end if you're going through hell if you're just going through a really hard time know that jesus has already been there and he is there with you right now and he is not leaving you he's gonna walk with you every step of the way and he's gonna walk you out of this and you're gonna see your way through this this is not it for you okay this is not it for me this is not it for you god has so much more for you and just cling on to him and keep moving forward with him lean into his comfort and look out for the blessings that are all around you i love you so much and i'll see you in my next video bye